Alright, hey everyone, welcome back. So, as of now, you are able to solve separable equations and first order linear equations. So that puts you in a pretty good spot to now be able to model certain scenarios and then with those scenarios craft an ODE that kind of tells you what's going on in that system. So, first things first, I want to throw out there that there's going to seem like there's like a lot of different types of problems that can be in this realm, in this section. Um, and I can't do all of them for obvious reasons. So just know that if you apply the methods that you learn from this section, you should be able to do well with any scenario that's thrown at you. So for the sake of this video, um, a lot of professors at Tech like to do the salt in water tank problem. And so I'm going to do that one just because it might not seem so intuitive to you. Um, but this is the one that I've seen in my time teaching that comes across the most. So let's just get started. This is how the problem is going to be posed to you. It's basically a paragraph. And so starting from the top, a tank initially contains 160 gallons of fresh water. Okay. Then water containing a quarter pound of salt per gallon is poured into the tank at a rate of four gallons per minute. Also good. And then the mixture is allowed to leave at the same rate. Great. Find the amount of salt in the tank after 10 minutes. Okay, good. So that's kind of a mouthful, but I would say if you follow these five steps, you should be good to go. So the method to do this is to first draw a picture. Kind of translate that whole paragraph into just one succinct picture. Throw in all your numbers, make sure you're modeling everything correctly, and then the ODE will just come uh, from the picture. Next thing is you should keep in mind this model needs to agree with the idea of change in salt is equal to rate of salt in minus rate of salt out. So this is something that I kind of have an issue with the book. Small issue. They just say um, rate of change is equal to rate in minus rate out. But I can see that can be a little confusing because it's like rate of what in minus rate of what out. Is it water? Is it salt? Is it flow rate? Da da da. Whatever. So here I'm being explicit. Rate of salt in minus rate of salt out. So label your quantities in your picture as much as you can. Also very important. Make sure you have the units on there because the fourth uh, pointer that I want to mention is if you use dimensional analysis to check yourself you should be fine. Um, making sure that your units are all the same across the board is going to do wonders for you. And then finally find the initial condition if applicable. Remember when you solve these kind of equations you're going to get a family of solutions. So if you impose an initial condition you'll be able to find your one particular solution for the given model. And just to keep track, uh, for this problem, rate of salt in minus rate of salt out, that rate of salt, we were given that salt was in pounds, right? And then the rate is something with respect to time, right? And so that was minutes. So let's just keep that in mind. Okay, good. I think we are ready to go and start modeling this. So first things first, draw a picture. Okay, so a tank contains 160 gallons of fresh water. So I will draw my tank like this. Nice little tank, that's my water, 160 gallons. Good. Then water containing quarter pound of salt per gallon is poured into the tank at a rate of four gallons per minute. So that probably looks something like this have a little pipe with if uh, you can imagine I'm not the greatest artist but this is some salt and it's just going in to the tank as follows and so I want to label everything so this is a quarter pound it's a very bad four I mean I can do better than that quarter pound of salt over per gallon and then it's flowing in at four gallons per minute so also four gallons per minute great and then the mixture is allowed to leave at the same rate good so I'll just make a little other pipe right here and so this is gonna leave at four gallons Put my arrow to show it's going out four gallons per minute. Okay. Good. So I want to find the amount of salt 
in the tank after 10 minutes. So let's go back to our change of salt is equal to change in salt in minus the change in salt out. So rate of salt in minus rate of salt out. So as you can see from here, this first thing right here, this is what's coming in, right? So they like to call salt the uh, letter Q, so I'm going to stick by that convention. So dQ dt, so this is how much salt is coming in per unit time is equal to one-fourth pound per gallon, right, times four gallons per minute. Notice how these two units cancel out. I get pounds per minute. That's good. And then what's happening? What's leaving? So then we have this part here that's leaving. Now you may be wondering, we don't have a pound per gallon here, we just have gallons per minute. Well, one thing's for sure, we have a minus sign, right, because it's leaving. And then, and we're going to put this right here, we have the same rate, so four gallons per minute. And then we don't know where we get our pound per gallon, right? Well, let's take a look at over here. This is the amount, this is the salt that we care about, the salt in the tank. So we can say that that is really just Q. Q is salt in pounds, great. And then we have 160 gallons in the tank. So we can do over 160. And then if we check our units, yes, gallons go away again and everything's in pounds per minute. That's good. Now our initial condition. Initial condition um, will tell you something about what this is like at time equals zero. So how much salt is in here at time equals zero? So if you remember the first sentence, it said a tank initially contains 160 gallons of fresh water. So fresh water means there's no salt. And it said initially contains. So that leads me to believe that Q of zero has to equal zero. And good. So we've used our picture. We've come up with our ODE. So now all that's left to do is we have to solve DQ dt is equal to one fourth that is a very bad four sorry again times four minus q over 160 times four we simplify this this is equal to one minus q over 40. And of course our initial condition is Q of 0 is equal to 0. And this, as we can see, we can solve. I would like to do this, I think it makes most sense to do, um, what do you call it, first order linear. So let's put it in the right form and get started. So if we go down a little bit and we move everything to the right side. dQ dt plus Q over 40 will equal 1. Okay. Here, our P, our Q of t, mm, I used that in the last video. Let's call it mu. I think that's what the book also likes to call it, but I wanted to use Q to make it pretty explicit. So mu of t is our integrating factor, and remember that's just going to be e to the integral, in this case, 1 over 40 dt. And so that would be e 1 over 40 t. Good. So further down, we can multiply both sides by that. And hopefully you've done maybe enough of these that you can skip a couple couple steps and say 140t times q the derivative of that is going to equal to e to the 1 over 40t right so then integrate both sides integrate this with respect to dt go down again we will get here nothing happens so i still have e to the minus 1 over 40 t 
q is equal to, now, this integral is going to become uh, minus 40, right? Yeah, minus 40 e to the minus 1 over 40 t plus c. Right? Uh, wait, nope. That is a positive. Sorry about that. Got a little carried away. Positive, positive, positive. Good. So, now when you get to here, our main goal is to solve for q. So let's divide everything by e to the 1 over 40t. We'll get q of t is equal to, this goes away, well, just the exponential, 40 plus c e to the minus 1 over 40 t. That's where uh, the minus 1 over 40 comes from. Okay, good. And then we want to apply our initial condition. So q of 0 is equal to 0. So q of 0, if we plug it into here, will give us 40 plus c times e to the 0 is just going to be 1, so it's just c, which means that c has to equal minus 40. And so our particular solution here will be q of t is equal to 40 minus 40 e to the minus t over 40. Good. But that's not what we want, right? The question was how much salt is in the tank after 10 minutes? So this is the power of differential equations. This is what you want to do. You want to be able to have some dynamical system that changes with time or with space or whatever it may be, and then you want to be able to find what that function is valued for different um, values of t or x. So that's what we can do now. We want to find the amount of salt at time 10 minutes. That's okay, because I can just do q of 10, and that's equal to 40 minus 40 e to the minus 1 fourth, right? And then this is approximately, you can leave it like this, but this is approximately 8.85 pounds of salt. Pretty cool, huh? So, use those five uh, tips that I have for you. Follow them each one by one. And you'll see that most of these problems are basically the same. And there you go. You can model using separable and first order linear. In the next video, I'm going to be talking about the fundamental theorem of Diffie-Q and showing you exactly why it'll be important, um, especially for a lot of you engineers and really mathematicians as well. But if you're in a research setting, um, this theorem could actually prove quite useful. So thanks for watching. And I'll see you in the next video.